right now is what photographers call the magic hour. I've just spotted another great shot. I'm gonna try and put together a series of stitched images. I'm hoping for a really exciting shot. That's exactly what we want. I've got two lights set up and we've got this lovely wooden line. The exposure range is just too great. Hi, I'm Carl Taylor, and in this episode, we're just gonna do a quick overview of what a crop sensor is compared to a full frame sensor. Now, recently in a previous episode, I did a comparison between the 5D Mark II and a Canon 7D for you to see the main differences. And as I explained in that particular episode, one of the main differences is the crop sensor size of a 7D compared to a full frame sensor on a 5D Mark II or a 5D Mark III or a 1DX. So what are we talking about? Well, let's start off with the basics of actually the image projection. If I just take this lens off of this camera, light travels through the lens and it forms an image which is a circle. If, you, if I hold this uh, lens up to the light and you look at what happens when it hits my hand, you can see there's a circle of light forming on my hand and that's called the image circle. So basically the image that is um, projected through the lens onto the area that captures the picture is actually a circle. It's a circle image, not a rectangle. Now, how does that work? Well, let's just do a quick drawing for you. So basically, that circle of light, which is coming through the lens, and onto the recording medium at the back of the camera, that recording medium in these cameras is a CCD or a CMOS chip, which is a light sensitive um, piece of silicon basically that records the light. And the size and shape of that chip is the sensor. And on a full frame camera, that sensor is a rectangle of recording medium that is 36 millimeter by 24 millimeter. And that is a full frame camera. That basically equates to the old historical value of 35 millimeter film in 35 millimeter cameras. And that is known commonly as a full frame sensor. And they're designed so that the image circle, the light that's coming through the lens, just goes past the areas required so that that can sort of maximize the capture area of that image circle. But on a crop sensor camera, the sensor is smaller. So it's actually a sensor which is only about so big, and there are different size crop sensors, but the Conventional one in the um, 7D is known as a 1.6 crop, and many of the sensors these days are a 1.6 crop. That basically means that the image is kind of effectively magnified 1.6 times. But the reality is that actually it's just a crop from what would have been the full image area of a full frame sensor. So it's kind of like cropping a photo or zooming in on it in Photoshop. So what I mean by that, well, let's just have a look at this photo here. So this photo was taken on a full frame camera and that was the whole image that was captured with a super wide angle lens, I think about 20 millimeter. And that 20 millimeter lens captured that view. Now, if that had been taken on a 7D camera from exactly the same position, with exactly the same lens, then unfortunately, it would have chopped out some key parts of the picture and we'd only be left with that area. Let me just fold those out so you can kind of see how it would have ruined or spoilt the shot if you like. And it means that we would have not been able to record 
the same area, the same beauty of the shot, we would have ended up with that if we had used the same 20 millimeter lens, the same camera position of the same subject, um, but with a crop sensor. We would have got a cropped version of the picture, kind of a zoomed in version. Now, what manufacturers have done to overcome that problem is they've created a separate set of lenses that give a wider angle of view. So instead of, say, for instance, the 16 to 35 millimeter lens, which is a common pro lens, super wide angle to wide angle zoom that's for full frame cameras, they have a 10 to 22 millimeter EFS lens for the crop sensor cameras so that it kind of matches the focal length of the super wide angle of 16 millimeter on a full frame. However, the, disad the disadvantage is that the, those type of lenses, the sort of lenses that have been created for the crop sensors are generally not available in the Pro series, the L series lenses, um, or the higher quality optics that are demanded by pro photographers. So therefore, most pro photographers are wanting to work on full frame sensors for two reasons. One, they are familiar with that format being the original full frame 35 mil format. And two, the lenses available to them and the pro level lenses um, work in the full wide angle and support the full frame area of the image circle. The advantage, if you like, of a crop sensor uh, comes in if you're shooting something that is further away, where you actually do want to magnify the shot, where maybe you want that extra magnification. So for example, you might be doing sports photography or you might be doing wildlife photography. And if you were taking a picture, say for example, of a bird in a tree in the distance with a telephoto lens on a full frame sensor, if you put that same telephoto lens on a crop sensor camera, it would effectively look like it's magnifying the image by 1.6 times, giving you that more zoomed in view. And that then kind of makes it easier because you wanted to magnify the view, so therefore you're getting a greater magnification. But it's not really that in reality. As I said, it's not actually magnifying it anymore. It's just cropping into an area that would have been available on a full frame sensor. And therefore, in, in, in doing so, you could have actually shot it on a full frame sensor and just cropped the picture yourself later. Because generally speaking, full frame sensor cameras have more megapixels and a higher resolution in, in most cases. In the 5D Mark II, it's a 22 megapixel camera. In the 7D, it's an 18 megapixel camera. Now, in the 1DX, which is a new full frame sensor camera, it's actually only 18 megapixels as well. Now, there are some other key reasons why pro photographers prefer to use full frame sensor cameras as opposed to crop sensor cameras. And let me demonstrate that using a medium format camera. This is a Hasselblad digital camera that I use um, for studio photography and some location work. And the reason that I use a camera like this is because the recording sensor area is huge. It's this gigantic chip size here, which is probably three times the size of a full frame sensor 35 mil camera. So let's give, actually, let's give you a little bit of a comparison. There you can see that incredible recording area of the medium format camera on that chip. And let's compare that to the recording area. Let me take the lens off this. We'll flip the mirror open. And you should be able to see the sensor in there. That's a full frame sensor camera comparing the chip size, there you go, of what you'd get on a medium format digital at the Hasselblad here. Let me open that again. And you can see huge area of recording area on that. That's a full frame sensor 35 mil camera. Let me get the 7D, take the lens off, and show you a crop sensor. Let me pop that on. Let's open that and open that, see if we can do them at the same time. So here we have the full frame sensor camera at the top and a 1.6 crop sensor at the bottom. Let me flick those on again. Just locking the shutter open there for 10 seconds so you can see that. So you should be able to see that the sensor at the top has got a larger recording area and it can basically um, capture that wider view with the equivalent lens in position. So if you're asking yourself, well, I can get the alternate lenses that they make to give me the super wide angle view 
and I benefit from the effective uh, 1.6 magnification on a crop sensor camera by shooting um, using the crop sensor format. What are the advantages of a full frame sensor camera? Well, it's a good question. But the reason that pros like to shoot on larger formats is the tonal range that they can capture is usually greater. Um, the image quality is improved by the larger sensor size. But one of the key differences for me is depth of field um, adjustments. Now, if you can imagine taking a portrait of someone from, say, five or six feet away with an 85 millimeter lens on a full frame sensor camera, you will have a um, depth of field control. Let's say you open the aperture up fully, blur the background, and you get exactly the depth of field that you'd like to attain. If you then use that same lens on a crop sensor camera, the image will appear magnified and you will have to move further back to get the head and shoulders area of the person the same in the picture as you would have on the full frame sensor camera. And by moving further back in doing so, the depth of field will change. The ability to get that sort of bokeh and blur in the background um, the same would be much, much more difficult. So larger sensor sizes give you this ability to have more creative control over depth of field um, for any given lens. Now, there are obviously ways around this. You could have switched to a wider angle lens, uh, like a 50 millimeter on the crop sensor camera, so that you wouldn't have had to move further back. But because you were using a wider angle lens, as I say, a 50 millimeter compared to an 85 millimeter, again, the um, blur, um, the depth of field control would appear different behind your subject matter. So those are the key reasons, is the depth of field control and the tonality of the image captured um, by a larger frame sensor. So I hope that gave you a bit of an understanding about the difference between full frame sensors and crop sensor cameras. Now, taking all that into consideration, let's not forget that these cameras, such as the 7D or the D300 Nikon, are very, very capable cameras image quality wise. Uh, the ability of all the functions and everything you get with them is absolutely superb. So let's again, let's not worry about all this pixel peeping. The main thing is to get out there and shoot great pictures because you can still shoot great shots on a camera like this compared to a full frame sensor. And in actual fact, we've got a tutorial coming up very soon where we test different cameras on different scenes against each other. We're going to shoot on a compact camera, a crop sensor, a full frame sensor, and a super high resolution HD, uh, uh, sorry, a super high resolution uh, digital Hasselblad camera. And we're gonna compare the shots and show you the differences.